thank you for joining us, first of all, uh, for the Permalock Aluminum versus Steel webinar, where we want to talk about uh, the benefits of using aluminum edging, specifically Permalock Aluminum edging, over existing steel edging that you may be using. Uh, my name is Daniel Martin. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Permalock and we'll be doing the presentation. I also have in the room with me Josh Barnes, who is our sales manager, who will be helping me field some questions later if necessary. Um, but you can see in the subtitle there, are you still using outdated edging technology? You know, you might not think of edging as technology, but you know, in, in, our, in our view, if you're using steel edging in 2021, you know, that's the equivalent of using a, a Motorola bag phone or something from, from the early 90s still, you know, it works. You can still make a call. You can still talk to people, but you're missing out on a lot of the great benefits that you would get from a smartphone these days. So making that jump from steel to, to permalock aluminum is kind of that same thing. You know, you're, you're getting everything you had before, plus a lot more benefits to make your life a lot easier. And we're going to cover some of those today. So with that, let's go ahead. I want to give a little background on Permalock, in case you are not familiar with uh, who we are and, and where we come from. Uh, Permalock has been around since 1983. So we're, you know, 38 or so years here cruising along. Uh, and we are the world's most specified edging brand. So when a landscape architect or an architect or landscape designer puts edging down on a plan, it is our brand, it is Permalock, more than any other brand in the world that is going on those specifications. And that comes about in a lot of ways because we were founded by a landscape architect. Uh, our founder, Dan Zweer, uh, graduated from Michigan State University with his landscape architecture degree, and he went into the design build field. So not only was he designing these projects, drawing the lines, coming up with the ideas, but then he was going out and running the crew and actually getting them installed. And in the course of that, uh, working with existing edging out there, plastic and then steel, he was never able to get quite the results he wanted with the look that he wanted in his landscapes. Plus, there was a lot of labor involved for his crews. Uh, so he took that and invented aluminum landscape edging and started using it on his jobs. And then eventually other people wanted it and it turned into the company that is Permalock. And one thing very unique about us is that from that very first design using the landscape architect side and the landscape contractor practicality of installation side, that same methodology goes into everything we do today. Still, every product that we come out with, every single thing that happens at this company comes from that both left and right brain kind of idea, uh, which is why our products have gone on to now become the world's most specified edging. All right, uh, we make very application specific products. We're gonna talk about that uh, quite a bit more in depth later in the presentation, but there's no one size fits all landscape edging. Um, a lot of different requirements for different things. And then lastly, sorry, am I cooperating here? We are the industry experts in edging application and use. Uh, we have a very highly trained staff of project specialist, product specialist, who know the ins and outs of edging and edging applications and are here to help anyone who needs help uh, determining what they need to use on a project. Real quick, we're gonna go through some projects that we're on just to give you an idea. Uh, we've got the High Line here in New York City, the Presidio in San Francisco. We're at the White House. Um, you know, you can see all very prestigious landscapes. Um, nothing, you know, if you're, if you're doing the best landscape, you're looking for Permalock but that could go from the White House to your house residential. Uh, we've got green roofs in New York City, all the way back to Independence Hall, the Disney Performing Arts Center in Los Angeles. Um, this is the 9-11 Memorial in New York City. Um, very honored to be on this project. Boston Children's Museum, an award-winning project by Michael Van Walkenberg. This is the Buckingham Fountain in Chicago, which is the world's largest permeable pavement installation. And, uh, is on that, holding those permeable pavers in place. If you know high-end residential, any residential really, where we've got products that work in those atmospheres as well. Lady Diana Memorial in London, our products are all over the world. Another green roof in New York City. Those are just a few uh, highlights of the different kinds of projects that we can go on that we just wanted to show you. Um, 
One thing that we like to talk about is sustainability in the landscape. Uh, the tagline on our logo, if you noticed it there, is uh, sustainable edging solutions. We try to make sure that our products are environmentally conscious, um, environmentally friendly, but also that they are sustainable in the fact that they will last the lifetime of the project. Um, well, what is a sustainable landscape? It's, it's something that's responsive to the environment, it's regenerative, and it actively contributes to the development of healthy communities, very important. Um, sustainable landscapes can also sequester carbon, clean the air and water, increase energy efficiency, restore habitats, and a lot of triple bottom line benefits, social, economic, and environmental, the triple bottom line. Um, you know, if you're going after lead points, or if you're going after sites, the new like lead for landscape, uh, our products definitely help contribute to those points. So how do you get sustainability in the landscape? It's accomplished by thoughtful, intelligent design and product selection. So you want to take careful consideration when you're selecting the products to go on a project that they will last the lifetime of the project, that life cycle analysis. Uh, you want it to be able to be sustainable for the life of the project. And Permalock definitely fits in that category. So the big question is why use edging? Um, you know, if you're here because you're using steel edging, then obviously you understand that edging is important, but there are also those people who don't understand or, or don't feel like they need to use edging that, you know, they can spade cut, that kind of thing. But the three main reasons that we say you should use edging, uh, the first is the designer's intent. You know, when a designer, uh, whether that's, you know, someone at your firm or a landscape architect uh, is creating a plan, there's a lot of attention to detail and a lot of reason for the lines that they draw. You know, the, the curves or are, are particular shape or, or radius and, and parallel lines, you know, they're really looking for a look that will attract the eye in an, an aesthetically pleasing way. And when you use edging, you're guaranteeing that that design intent will stay the way it was intended. If you were to go with a natural spade cut instead of an edging, each time that that bed is maintained, the line is gonna change. You know, it's either gonna grow, it's gonna move, it's gonna uh, change the radius. So with the quality edging in place, you're gonna guarantee that the project will remain to look the way it was intended. Um, second reason is it looks better. Uh, the eye notices uh, rough lines or clean lines, and it's drawn to those sharp, clean lines. So aesthetically to the user of the space, they're going to have a much better appealing experience if, uh, if there's edging in place. And then lastly, you're going to reduce cost. Um, that you're not going to have to send that guy out with a spade, you know, every few months or whatever to to go and clean it up and make sure that it, it's looking good. It's just going to stay looking like it did. Um, you're not going to lose mulch and rocks into grass, and and grass isn't going to grow into where the mulch should be. Overall, reducing your maintenance costs. All right. When we talk about edging, there are many different materials you can use for edging, and we're going to cover a few of them here. And then obviously, since aluminum versus steel is the title of this, we're going to spend a lot more time on that, circle back around to that. But just to cover these briefly, aluminum, uh, best choice. Uh, pros are it's durable, it's lightweight, it's flexible. If there are any cons, it could be that it's priced more than some of these other options, um, but that seems to be coming more uh, as time goes on. Steel, pros, durable. Everybody thinks of steel, they think it's, it's very durable, it, it's not gonna get damaged. Um, cons are that it's heavy, it's difficult, it'll rust, and it can be expensive. We're gonna get more into that specifically coming up. Plastic is another popular option when it comes to edging. Uh, it's lightweight. It's inexpensive, but it is extremely difficult to work with, um, and it is considered temporary. It's going to have to be replaced every few years because it's going to work its way out of the ground. It's going to get damaged by equipment or people. So those are kind of the, the downsides of plastic. A few more options. You can use wood. You know, we talk about sustainability. It's natural, which is good. Um, if it's a sustainably or reharvestable wood, that's better. Um, but the cons are that it can rot and the aesthetics aren't that great. It can be big and bulky. And, and if it starts to warp and rot, it doesn't look that great. Another one that's been gaining over the last uh, decade or two is concrete. 
Uh, very similar to wood, um, it's durable as a pro, but the, but the cons are that the aesthetics, it's big and bulky and it, it's, it doesn't just blend in and do its job. Uh, and it can be expensive because it requires special machinery and, and possibly another contractor on the job who has that machinery. And then, of course, there's other solutions. We've mentioned several times uh, natural edge, you know, cutting with a spade, you know, that's an option, the no edging option. And there's things like bullet pavers and things like that that can be used as well, or decorative fence type edging. But specifically, let's dive into this permalock versus steel. Uh, four really main areas that we're going to cover. Uh, the first one of those is weight. The second one is rust. Then we're gonna talk about staking. There are some big differences in, uh, in staking between aluminum, particularly permalock aluminum and steel. And then now uh, we wanna talk about flexibility. You'll see a big difference there as well. Just a reminder, anyone who has joined us uh, since I got started, if you have questions, feel free to ask them at any time using the Q&A feature uh, in your Zoom menu there, Q&A and we'll get to those um, or we can wait till the end and get to some as well but just wanted to remind you you can ask at any time feel free all right uh so permalock versus steel first thing looking at is weight uh amazingly aluminum only weighs one fifth of what a comparable steel edging product weighs so Think about that uh, when you're hauling things around on the job. Uh, one man can easily take a 240 foot box of aluminum edging and move it himself. Uh, but if you're gonna move a comparable 240 feet of steel edging, you would probably need a lift truck to do that or you would be making many trips back and forth on a job site to get it loaded in where you need it. You can see on this picture on the left here, that is 50 pieces of steel edging and it is all bound up and in, in kind of like a skid and would not be easy to move at all. Uh, and then just a small comparison, here is 25 pieces of steel bound up next to 45 pieces of aluminum. And so you can see you're getting a lot more pieces in about the same space, but it's boxed, it's packaged, it's much easier to move. And and honestly, this is a, a little heavier duty aluminum. Some of the, uh, the lighter duty boxes are even smaller than this. So making it even easier to move around. So what does this weight mean? You know, okay, what's well, in the ground? What, what does weight have to do with anything? Think about your labor. Um, guys moving stuff back and forth, you know, um, transportation savings when you're shipping it or even, you know, moving it on your own trucks. Uh, reduced injury liability, uh, how many guys throw their back out moving steel around or, you know, potentially get injured in, in many ways with steel. That's not going to happen with aluminum. And really all around, you're just going to have a better experience uh, carrying and, and moving aluminum logistically. And, and some of that we're going to talk even more about later. But those are kind of the highlights of why the weight is important. I mean, if you had a choice to, to use a product that actually performed better, was a superior product, and you only had to carry one fifth the weight around to use it. Uh, that seems like a, a phenomenal choice. And I'm sure guys on the job site would thank you. Uh, and even if you are, some of you might be distributors that are, that are here as well. Uh, just think about moving stuff around in your shop or helping customers load trucks and, and get product. Uh, just that weight there is gonna be a big benefit as well. Secondly, we'll look at staking a little more in depth. Uh, we've all seen that picture on the right in real life, I'm sure, if you're a steel edging user. Um, not the prettiest thing, uh, but typical steel edging uses two stakes to form the connection. And those stakes are just flat, friction fit stakes that can easily begin to work their way out, much like you're seeing here. Uh, in contrast, permalock stakes have numerous barbs throughout the length. So it's a 12 inch stake and there are many barbs that stick out along the, the length of the stake that help it bite into the soil to prevent it from working its way back out of the ground. It really helps, uh, helps keep everything in there. And then not only does it help keep it in the ground, 
but our stakes are also engineered to lock into the stake loop. And this is gonna prevent it from working its way up and sticking up above the top of the edging line and causing a hazard, which you'll often see with steel as well, where you've got a stake sticking up that can be a trip hazard, it can be a safety hazard if somebody fell on it. Um, so a far superior stake. And in addition, many of our products offer up to eight stakes per 16 foot section, where with the typical steel, you're gonna get five stakes. So th think of that, a 16 foot piece of steel with five stakes, where two of them have to be tied up in the connection, that gives you really three stakes to cover 16 feet, where we have eight stakes that are evenly distributed with a stakeless connection. So every two feet on center, you could have a stake. Now, I will say that our product does come with five stakes, much like steel does, but we have those extra loops as an optional benefit in case you need to get more bite in a certain kind of soil or you're running certain curves or radius where you need to make sure that you've got extra staking there holding in place. And here's what a permalock connection looks like. You can see uh, the stakes there. And then right in the middle, you can see that stakeless connection system. And you get a wonderful curve right through that stakeless connection system. You won't end up with tangents like you often do with a steel connection where you've got the two stakes holding it in place. Just more of the many benefits of looking at a permalock edging. Another big thing about steel that everyone notices is rust. Uh, looking at this picture here, this is an installation picture <laughs> and that steel is already that rusted as it's going in the ground. So, so imagine after it's been there for a while. Um, Aluminum, on the other hand, does not rust at all. It has a architectural A1 rating against corrosion. Uh, it will not rust, even in like marine environments or acidic soil environments, you're not gonna have rusting issues, which is going to make it continue to look good again for the lifetime of the project. So, you know, even if a steel legend goes in and stays for the lifetime of the project, it's gonna start looking a little rough. Um, where the aluminum is going to look the same, you know, in year 30 as it does on day one. Another thing with rust and steel, we hear a lot from, uh, from landscape architects is that the rust will bleed off of the steel. Uh, and one, it can do harm to plants. And two, and this is a big problem we hear about is it will stain and damage adjacent hardscape materials. So if it's up against a, a paver, walkway or patio or concrete walkway, eventually you're gonna start getting that orange stain around the edge uh, where the edging is. And that can look unsightly. Um, I think of New York City parks, for instance, uh, we're having to pay people to come in and power wash sidewalks constantly to get that staining off where when they switch to aluminum, didn't have that issue. And again, like I said, rust-free aluminum assures that the project remains looking good, uh, which is really what it's all about. You want a project that will maintain its integrity and continue to be visually appealing as long as it's there. And that's what Permalock is about. And here's just an installation with our edging. Of course, uh, in there, this is a black painted edging and you're not gonna see any rust ever coming from that. All right, flexibility. This is probably the biggest uh, labor and, and job saving that you can have out of the ones that we're going to cover here. Um, aluminum is extremely flexible. Our product is tempered uh, to provide a spring back function. So you can, you can curve and bend and let it go and it's going to come back to near straight um, every time. And this allows you to to, to play with the, the curves and make sure you're getting everything exactly right, to get beautiful S curves, graceful, smooth curves, perfect circles. Uh, looking at this piece on the right here, um, it looks like, oh, steel, that makes a great circle. Well, here's the trick. You have to buy that circle. Um, in the field, it would be very difficult to actually form that circle. So they sell circles, tree rings, half circles, quarter circles as accessories. 
So you have to order the size you need. There's more labor, more room in your truck getting it there. Um, and again, if you take, let's look at this. If you look at permalock, you can take a piece of permalock edging, eight foot, 16 foot. One person can take it, turn it into itself, connect it to itself using the stakeless connection system, and it will form a perfect circle right off the bat. Or you can take multiple pieces, connect them to each other and form larger circles. You know, here's somebody on a job site. Um, they've got a couple pieces connected there and just with the hands forming that great curve, just like that. And if you let go, it would spring back to its, uh, to its flat form. So it makes it very easy to work with for your guys on the job site saves them a lot of labor, a lot of time, making sure you've got the right accessories, the right components to, to make the curves and circles that you need. And this easier forming along with the easier maneuverability due to weight is like I said, it's gonna just save you a ton of job, a ton of time, sorry, on your job site. And there are additional factors to consider uh, when we're talking about aluminum versus steel. Safety is a very, very big one. On aluminum etching, all of our, our beads are rounded. Uh, everything is kind of curved off, so there aren't sharp points or sharp places that you could cut yourself, unlike steel, which has very angular uh, top, and then the, the stakes with the, the triangles coming out are, uh, are very dangerous. Um, that's why a lot of steel companies sell like rubber caps that you can put on, you know, which which helps with that safety feature, but now you're changing the, the aesthetics because you're getting a little bulkier and not just a nice clean thin line in the landscape. Uh, and then of course the safety uh, of your crew during the installation, you know, like we talked about um, carrying the heavy weight, moving that around, et cetera. Um, so definitely aluminum is a safer choice. Uh, another thing to consider is cutting. If you want to cut steel on the job site, you're going to need a pretty big hefty saw to get that cut where you could cut aluminum on a job site with a hacksaw, and it's very simple to do. Price is becoming more and more uh, in aluminum's favor. I've been at Permalock around 17 years. When I started here, we were more expensive than steel. Uh, and we were okay with that because we were a better product and you, you pay for a premium product. But as I've been here, I've seen that really level out where we were near equal and now we in most cases many cases are considerably less than the price of steel especially with things going on right now in the steel market um, the price of steel has doubled uh, on the market in the last year uh, less actually uh, not only is that now causing your you know, price issue but also an availability issue because it's so expensive a lot of the steel manufacturers aren't uh, aren't carrying the stock they have uh, demand for steel is high. Uh, you know that demand and price are kind of related. So you got a high price and low availability, and that's a bad combination. So if you are a steel user, someone who's been using it for a long time and have have never made that switch to aluminum, now is the perfect time to really look at that uh, possibility. And we can almost guarantee you that uh, once you switch to to the permalock aluminum product, you're not going to want to go back to steel. The, the guys on the job lugging it around are going to beg you not to go back to steel. <laughs> so uh, we highly encourage you to, to give it a shot. And there are other factors as well that, that make uh, aluminum uh, superior to steel. And some of that we're going to cover here um, when we get back into this application specific uh, link, lingo that we talked about where, you know, there's, there's basically one steel. It's, it's all flat slit steel, different sizes, different heights, thicknesses, but it's just basically the same product. And Aluminum off offers you a lot more options, uh, a lot more application specific products that can even save you more time on the job than just um, switching from steel to the flat aluminum. All right. Um, we do want to point out, this is something we, we often talk about, that all edgings are not equal. Um, Edging manufacturers, uh, particularly aluminum manufacturers, uh, you know, some plastic, use nominal measurements. So with steel, if you're a steel user, you know, if you get quarter inch steel, it's a quarter inch piece of steel. 
all the way down because it's just a flat piece of steel or eighth inch or 14 gauge. When you move into aluminum, things are a little more nominal and the size is based off of the top bead of the edging. So you can get a one eighth inch edging, a three sixteenths inch edging. The difference here is that many companies start with that bead at that thickness, but throughout the body of their edging, they get considerably thinner. Um, so if you listen to this webinar today and you walk out and you're saying, yep, I'm sold, I want aluminum. Aluminum's better than steel. And then you get to look on the web and you find some other aluminum and you're like, oh, Permalock's great, but these guys might be a little cheaper. Keep in mind uh, these next couple points right here, that nominal thickness, because you might think you're comparing apples to apples, but you are comparing apples to t-shirts, like not even in the same world <laughs> as far as thickness and performance. So make sure you're checking those things out no matter what edging product you look at. And then additionally, there's different features and accessories. So, you know, we talked a lot uh, in the last few minutes about our stakeless connection system, uh, how that interlocks and there's no stakes involved. Well, not all aluminum or not all other edgings have that. In fact, uh, there's only a couple that do have stakeless. Uh, so, you know, looking for those kind of features and making sure that you are getting uh, what you pay for and that a low price isn't uh, necessarily a better product. Uh, and then even thinking in the same material like plastic and even in some aluminum, there's different recipes. Uh, like you could have a polyethylene plastic edging or a polyurethane plastic edging. And those two things are gonna behave very differently in the landscape. Um, they're gonna have different thermal expansion. They're gonna behave differently in the sun or the cold. So just keeping these things in mind that, that you truly are comparing like mine or like um, featured edgings when you're looking at that. So how do you choose the edging? You know, we've talked about all of this stuff. There's so many different things with the edging. How do I know which one to get? Well, there's really five main things you want to consider. The first one is performance. Uh, it has to work. Uh, it's got to be durable. It has to be made to last. So you want something that is high in quality, that's going to stand up to maintenance equipment, going to stand up to human interaction, going to stand up to nature and weather interaction, and, and truly is going to last for the life of your project. Of course, another thing to look at is aesthetics. And what uh, is aesthetically pleasing to one person might not be to another person. And each job might have a different aesthetic demand on it. Uh, maybe you want something that is visible and decorative, um, you know, frilly little fences, or you want that big bulky um, concrete to really stand out and set something apart. Or maybe you want something where you're not even going to see it's there, but it's going to hold the line, it's going to keep things in place and make sure that the, uh, the structural integrity and the visual integrity of the product or project stays the same. So really consider the aesthetics that you're looking for in the project or your client or customer is looking for. That's gonna play into it. Availability is huge. Um, you could uh, spec the most wonderful edging, but if the contractor can't get their hands on it, uh, they can't get it into the distributor, can't get it onto the job site, then it doesn't do any good because you're not gonna be able to complete your project without it. So you wanna make sure that in your region, your area, the project, product is available. Um, with that, let's say that Permalock, we do ship 99% of our orders on the same day. So wherever you are, we can get material to you very quickly. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, cost is important, obviously. Uh, you know, solid gold uh, edging would look great, but probably gonna be cost prohibitive on most projects. Uh, so, you know, make sure you consider cost that, um, that it will work for the project you're working on, but also very important to keep in mind that price versus cost equation, because like we were talking earlier, just because something is less expensive doesn't mean it's going to cost less. Uh, so the product itself, the price of the product might be less, but if you're spending a lot more labor to get it in, you're having to go back for callbacks because it won't stay the way it's supposed to stay, 
the cost is going to ramp up dramatically. So even though you got a, a low price, your cost could be high. So always keep in mind that price cost equation because that's very important in selecting products. And lastly, installation. Uh, you want it to be simple to install. You want to have the accessories and the things that you need to accomplish the installation that you're trying to accomplish because this is all going to save time and money on the project. If you can spend uh, pay a little bit higher price for an edging, but you can save hours and hours of labor, that's going to be a win for you and for your customers on the project. All right, let's talk application specific edgings. We brought this up uh, a little bit here and there, but there are many different applications that you can use edging on, and we're going to cover some of these uh, coming up here briefly. Um, but each application has very different requirements uh, for what type of edging it needs, uh, whether this is different shapes of edging, some you need a flat edging, some you need an L-shaped edging, different features, some need uh, stakes, some need spikes, uh, some need to have a nice clean outer wall because they're going to be visible, some don't need that. So the world of steel edging where it's steel is steel and you just use that same shape for every single thing you do, pavers, beds, asphalt, all of that, that's not the permalock rule. We make very specific edgings for different applications. We have over 750 different SKUs in our inventory that include different shapes, sizes, colors, everything. So there is a, a world of edging out there. And then it's important now to know the applications and how they're constructed so that you can select the right edging. But here's what's great about Permalock compared to a lot of different edging companies is you don't have to know that. All you have to know is our phone number, our website, our email address, one of those things, reach out to somebody here. And like I said earlier, we've got a stable full of edging experts who will make sure that you get the exact right product for your project that is gonna make you, you know, the look good and save you time and money and installation and labor costs. This is one project, it's a hospital uh, in Michigan. And just this one project had six different edging applications on it that required six different edgings. So you think, oh boy, okay, I've got this job, which edging do I need for this job? But it might be, which edging do I need for this part of this job? Which edging do I need for this part of this job to match it all up and, and get the right thing? So we're gonna go through uh, those six applications and then a couple additional ones just real briefly. And then we can, uh, we can take more questions. And again, if you have questions throughout while I'm talking, feel free to pop them into that Q&A and we'll get to them. So first let's talk about landscape beds. This is really the most common edging application. Typically, if you think landscape edging, this is what you're picturing as a contractor is just, you know, basic landscape bed, you know, probably some nice curves, you know, in front of the house, along the edge of a building, something like that. Here's a few more pictures uh, and there's your basic installation of what a landscape bed um, detail looks like. You've got uh, your soil dug down, you set the edging down in it, you uh, back, stick it in, you backfill, fill it up with some mulch, and there you go. You've got turf on one side, mulch or rock or something on the other, some plants in there. But really the most common thing, if you're using steel edging, this is probably something you're using steel for a lot. Um, here's what it looks like finished. You get a nice low profile, very, very clean line. You can see with uh, Permalock on that bottom right picture, we're able to mirror those curves of that walkway like perfectly to create parallel lines that can that curve on that S like that because of the flexibility, that kind of stuff is very easy to do with our product. Uh, you can see here the stakes we were talking about earlier. Uh, you can see some of the barbs sticking out there, uh, the little dimple where our stake, stake locks into the stake loop so it's not going to come up and you can really see that interlocking connection system that prevents the material from coming apart makes it very easy to, to move it around as you're installing it, you know, slide it left or right after multiple pieces are connected. 
All right. Next, I want to point out maintenance strips. Now, this is an area that's often overlooked, and most people think, oh, yeah, I just use the same flat edging. And you can do that. You certainly can do that. If you're using a heavier duty edging, a thicker gauge, then that makes it even easier to do. But if you're using a thinner gauge edging, it's very hard to get those pin straight, perfectly parallel lines without getting any waves as you look down the line. So as one of thinking of our application specific products, um, we developed many years ago a product that allows you to get pin straight lines very quickly and very easily for these kind of maintenance areas. Now, uh, here's a few more images. You can see along the fence line, you're getting that perfectly straight line, you know, another gravel maintenance area. But the, the key and the trick to that is uh, if you look in the detail, uh, you've got a, a regular height edging. We make it in three and a half, four, and six inch tall. But on the bottom of that, you've got about an inch and a quarter foot. So you're getting kind of like that capital L feel. And what that foot does is allows that edging to continue to remain perfectly pin straight. So you get that nice clean line. A lot of people, what they do here uh, to make installation incredibly quick, uh, say you know, on that detail that uh, they're two foot off of that fence is, is how wide their maintenance area was. But cut a two by four, that's whatever that width is, two feet, and everywhere you come to a stake loop, you push the two by four up against the building or the fence, you push the edging up against the two by four and you pound that stake in. Move to the next one, same thing. And you will go very quick and you will end up perfectly two feet off the, the wall or the fence uh, the whole way and it'll look great. Huge, huge time savings for crews who are installing. Uh, they're not constantly measuring. They're not constantly trying to make sure they're hitting those stakes perfect to, to prevent waving. Uh, you'll really see the time savings there. Um, the Permalock version, the Permalock uh, product is called Permastrip. Um, and it is a phenomenal product for straight lines whenever you need those. And there's uh, what it's going to look like finished. All right. Next, we want to talk about aggregate walkways. Uh, these are, you know, it could be gravel, uh, could be decomposed granite, pea gravel, you know, out west, southeast, or southwest, and out, out west, you get a lot of the decomposed granite, that kind of California gold, like you're seeing in this picture in the background here. Uh, east Coast, you might get some uh, pea gravel or small chipstone, things like that for driveways, walkways. Um, and here's what that detail looks like. We actually have several ways you could accomplish this. It varies dramatically whether you have a compacted base or not a compacted base, uh, which product you're going to use. This one we're looking at here happens to be a compacted base. So in this instance, you have an L-shaped edging that is being spiked into that compacted base, and that's going to hold that in place. And then you are loading your your aggregate right on top of that foot and everything is kind of integrating and being held right in place. Uh, you can see some pictures here from New York City. That's a DG and then uh, also out in uh, Palm Desert, California. Um, got a very nice looking kind of arid landscape there that's uh, being all divided by this kind of application. And once the aggregate's on, in all the way, again, everything we do, very, very minimalistic, clean lines. Our edging is designed uh, for function. Um, more than anything, you know, it doesn't scream, hey, look at me. It uh, just does what it's supposed to do and keeps those lines looking visually appealing to, to the viewer and the user of the project. All right, brick paver, very, very popular. Um, becoming more and more popular each year. Instead of concrete, uh, you're seeing paver driveways, paver walkways. Um, and we make many styles and sizes of paver restraint for, for all sorts of paver applications. Uh, anything from, from a very, very short um, one and an eighth inch for uh, like travertine tiles, uh, around pool decks, things like that all the way up to a six inch um, for 
for heavy duty applications or, or tall favors or people, you know, doing kind of different applications. Uh, you can see again, compacted base, the edging is spiked in the compacted base. It holds in both a setting layer of sand and the pavers, keeps them from moving in any direction. Um, we typically recommend that the paver restraint goes, you know, about halfway up the paver or a little more than halfway up the paver. That makes it, uh, when you're looking at it, once it's backfilled, in this instance, you're not even going to see the edging. It's going to be below the soil line even, but it's preventing any lateral movement from those pavers. So they remain interlocked and the structural integrity of the paver insulation remains strong. Uh, again, it's spiked in, it's got a sliding connector. Uh, some stuff we, we do use different types of connectors. We've got a lot of options here. But you can see in, uh, in both of these pictures, you don't see that edging material. It's just doing its job without being seen. And next is permeable pavement. Uh, permeable is becoming more and more popular. Uh, the difference between the standard paver installation and a permeable paver installation is that the permeable paver allows water to pass through. So it goes down uh, the channels between the pavers and then underneath the pavers is more of an open grade course of stone that allows the water to filter, filter down back into the, uh, to the water plane. Um, this is environmentally friendly and that you don't get water runoff with chemicals and things like that that move off into, um, into the sewer that could cause um, combined sewer overflows, which puts uh, sewage waste into waterways, that kind of thing. Um, you can see here the drawing, uh, the open grade base below. Um, this drawing didn't get changed out to one of the fancy new ones, apologize for that. Um, but the water will just run down through, uh, filter its way back in and not have runoff. Uh, you can see we came up with a very unique method to do this. Uh, once permeable pavement started becoming more and more popular, which it continues to grow. Uh, a few years ago, there was a study out that said, you know, if pavement today, it's 80% standard, 20% permeable, within a decade, that would probably be flipped where you'll have 80% permeable, 10% standard. Um, so the problem with that open base is that you can't spike your edging into it because the spike won't hold. You can just pull it back out. So there were only options to either bring in a separate base and compact the base around the perimeter of the permeable base or to put concrete in and not and use concrete instead of edging because you could get a concrete toe going on top of that base. Uh, so Permalot came up with a new concept that we patented that allows us to use a geo grid. You can see that black uh, grid that goes between a couple layers of the stone. So your, your base stone and then your setting stone. And that creates a friction bound plane. So now you're, you can't pull that grid up because it's interlocked in with all that stone. And then we have uh, what we call a capture plate. And you can use any of our eight foot edging on top of the grid. You slide these little capture plates underneath the grid, a couple screws tap it in, and now the edging is attached to that grid and it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, it's been a great system. It's really taken off. Uh, it's been being used a lot for permeable. Um, we've had a lot of scientific testing done on it. It actually tests as stronger than a traditional paper restraint holds. So it's uh, we're very happy with it. And if, if you're getting into permeable at all, if you've got any jobs that come up that have that, definitely give us a call and we can we can walk you through this uh, application. All right, asphalt. Uh, this is something in the landscape where um, a lot of times people didn't want to use asphalt. Uh, you know, pavers or concrete look better because you get the nice clean lines, you get the grass growth right up to it. And if you used asphalt, you would always end up with some dead grass and the asphalt breaking off. And it was never very appealing looking. Um, but sometimes budgets just require that you need to use asphalt instead of concrete or pavers just because of the price. So we came up with a concept of asphalt edge, um, which is an asphalt paver, uh, I'm sorry, an asphalt restraint that goes along the side of the asphalt and gives you that nice clean vertical line 
allows the grass to grow right up adjacent to it without dying off. And it actually lengthens and strengthens the life of the asphalt itself because now it's not breaking off into chunks, which then go farther and farther. It strengthens that whole edge and keeps the asphalt installation looking good. So another application that you know is very specific, you could, you could use steel on the edge of asphalt, people do it, but it's, it's not easy. You know, they'll go back and cut the asphalt and then put the steel along it. Where here you're pouring the asphalt right on top of this product and it's gonna hold. And there's what you, you get when it's done. A couple more, and uh, then we'll be able to take any, any final questions. Uh, sports surface, nearly identical to uh, asphalt, except here um, there's a rubberized course. So you might have a base course of asphalt, but then the top inch or two will be that rubberized uh, soft um, material. And the only difference in our installation method is that we have a product called Athlete Edge and we put some holes. You can see them on the top inch or so of that uh, material about every foot. There's a little weep hole and that allows as the sponginess of that athletic surface gets compressed, it moves the water laterally and allows the water to escape so that it doesn't get caught between the layer of asphalt and the rubberized surface, which could cause um, freeze thaw. Um, problems. All right. And lastly, we're going to mention green roofs. Um, green roofs are becoming more and more popular in North America over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. Uh, a lot of cities are mandating that any new construction or, or heavy remodel has to have a green roof put on, uh, like cities like Toronto, DC, Chicago, Seattle, uh, all over the country. That's becoming a thing. And we make an edging that uh, holds the lines on the green roof. Uh, you can see uh, these pictures here. Um, it's actually kind of a raised bed edging on the one on the left, uh, holding all that planting material in, keeping it away from the pavers. And then you can see on the picture on the bottom right, where all, each one of those little channels of stone um, that allows water to kind of run through it is being held in place uh, on each side by our edging. And that's at the... Um, first lead certified professional sports venue and it's Nationals Park in Washington, DC. Looking at the detail, you can see you've got some, you know, soil growing medium with plants growing out of it. And then you've got the edging setting on top of kind of the slip sheet drainage layer and holding in a ballast. Uh, this edging can be straight, it can be curved. You know, that's true with, with all of our edgings, uh, except for the the 16 foot version of the perma strip we talked about for the rigid straight lines. Every other edging we do has some method to be curved or straight um, and you know, different bases, different things, but it can all be done. And there you go as a finished look at that. All right. So we covered a lot here today. I know that. Um, I don't expect you to be an edging on X or an, <laughs> edging expert yet, um, and nor do you need to be ever because like I've said, we have all of the experts here that you could ever need. But we also have this wonderful tool, permalock.com that you're seeing here. Uh, our website is quite extensive. It has a lot of drawings and details. Uh, it's got um, you know, all of our products on it, um, installation instructions, photo galleries of projects we're on, you can find dealers, pretty much uh, anything you need to know about us, you can find here. But also, you can always pick up the phone and give us a call, and we are happy to answer any questions, help match up projects or products for your projects, and kind of anything you need. Uh, we pride ourselves here in Permalock on three things quality, service, and selection. Uh, we do the highest quality materials, make sure that you're getting a quality product every time. Uh, we give you the best service and look out for our customers and help you in every way we can. And then selection, we're giving you the most edging selection, the broadest selection of edging materials out there in the market. So with that, I want to just say thank you. Uh, we are all over the place. You can find us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those things. <laughs>